Welcome to Excel Mastering VLOOKUP. My name is Randy and I am an eLibrary specialist with the Jacksonville Public Library. The VLOOKUP function in Excel is used for retrieving data, meaning it's great for pulling out specific information that we need from across multiple workbooks and worksheets from large sets of data or smaller sets like we have here. Now it sounds complicated and intimidating, but most likely you've done VLOOKUP in real life hundreds of times, but you've never actually called it that. So let's take a look at this pizza menu. Let's say you got this from a flyer in the mail and you're looking through it. I come up to you and see it and I ask you, hey, can you look up the Pacific Rim pizza and tell me how much a large one costs? So go ahead and take a few seconds to find out. So you're looking for the Pacific Rim pizza in this menu and how much a large size would be. Okay, got it? So the answer is $23. And now the answer isn't really that important here. What's more important is what steps did you take to find the answer? Well, hopefully you did it this way. So I asked you about the Pacific Rim pizza. So you would take that and look vertically down the first column, vertical, that's why it's called VLOOKUP, until you find the Pacific Rim pizza. Then you went to the right until you found the price for the large size, $23. So congratulations, you just did a VLOOKUP. You didn't call it that though. You wouldn't have answered me, Sure, Randy, I just performed a VLOOKUP on this menu and it would be $23 for that large Pacific Rim pizza. That kind of answer would be just a little bit strange. So we just have to translate those actions into a way that Excel understands. We'll have to tell Excel what thing or person or whatever to look up. So here it was the Pacific Rim pizza, where to look it up. So we'll have to specify this specific cell range, right? It wouldn't be over here or over here. And then we have to tell it that when it's going to the right, which column does it need to stop in? So here, it stopped in the fourth column from the left here to find the price for the large. So let's write up a VLOOKUP function for this menu. We're gonna set it up so that when I type a pizza here, the VLOOKUP function will return to us the price of a small, medium, and large size. So I'll type in how special here to get it started. And in cell B1, I'm going to write a VLOOKUP function so that it will pull out the price of the small size and put it in here. Now, normally I would just type out the VLOOKUP function and fill it out manually, but that's because I've done these many times. Since we're just starting out though, I'd recommend using this way that I'm about to show you. I'll go up into the ribbon and click on formulas, and then I'll click on insert function. Now, I already have VLOOKUP here because I used it recently, but I'm gonna type it in here in this box because you may not see it here. So I'll type in VLOOKUP, no spaces. All lowercase or uppercase is fine. And I'll hit enter, or you can click on this go button here onto the right, but I'll hit enter on my keyboard. And you'll see this list kind of changes. Here's VLOOKUP here, and I'll double click now. So I get this new window with four different fields. You'll notice that the first three arguments here are in bold. This means that they're required. We need to put something into these fields here for VLOOKUP to work. Now you'll notice this last one is not bold, which means it's optional, but I always like to call this one required too. Let's start with lookup value, which is again, who or what we're trying to look up. So I'll click into this field and I'm trying to look up this pizza over here in cell A2. So I'll click here. We want to look up whatever pizza name I happen to type into cell A2. Now for the table array, let me click into here. I, again, I have to tell Excel where the data is. Where is it going to find information for this pizza? I'm gonna go ahead and select the cell range for this menu, starting in cell A4 here. And again, I'm telling Excel to look here in these cells that I've selected. Don't go looking for the cells over here or off to the side. They're gonna be in the menu here. Now the next one is the column index number. Here Excel is asking us again, which column to stop in when it goes to the right? Well, I want it to stop in the column that has the price of the small size. And here it's actually column B, but it's a bit weird here because it's asking for a column number, not letter. So I have to say column two. So starting from the left, this is column one, and this is column two. So Excel will count from the left, column one, column two, and then stop. So we'll type in two here. And then this last one here, range lookup, there are only two answers I can put here, true or false. I'm gonna type in false for now, and I'll come back to that later to explain why. But I'll go ahead and click okay. 
and I'll see that the price shows up here. Now, is that correct? So the health special, special small, yep, $14.50. And maybe I'll change the pizza to test this out. Maybe I would now want to look up the Cosmic Karma and I'll hit enter. And it changes there to update and it's $14, so that looks good. Now I do wanna mention here, when we're typing out the names of these, they are not case sensitive. So I could type this all in capital letters or all in lowercase letters and it would still find it. So before I do another one for the medium sized pizza, let's again recap how this works. So Excel takes the pizza here, Cosmic Karma, which is the look of value. And then it looks down the first column until it finds Cosmic Karma and then moves over to column two. So starting from this here, column one, column two, $14, and it returns it over here. Now that we have the concept down, let's go ahead and try the medium and large pizza here for more examples. So I'll click here in the medium cell here, that's cell C2, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the insert function feature over here again in the ribbon. And because I already did VLOOKUP in this search box here, it's gonna pop up here in blue, I'll double click this. Look at value is still gonna be the same. It's still gonna be in cell A2 where I type in the name of the pizza. Table array, that hasn't moved either. So I'm gonna select this range of cells. Column index number, now this one is going to change. So now that I want the medium pizza, I have to count over from the left. So this is column one, column two, and column three here for the medium. So here I'll type in three. And then again, I'll put in false for this one. Okay, I'll click okay. And there we go. So one more time for the large, I'll click here in this cell, cell D2, insert function, find that VLOOKUP function here. I double clicked on it. And again, the lookup value, that again, that hasn't changed, cell A2, move over, find that table array. And finally, column index number. So this one would be now column four, column one, two, three, and four. And one more time, we'll type in false. So now I have VLOOKUP to pull in the price of the different sizes of pizzas here. So let me again, just test this one more time. Maybe I'll type in Buffalo chicken. And I can see here the prices update to reflect that new data here, that Buffalo chicken pizza I typed in. So now we know how to run VLOOKUP. Let me switch over to this next worksheet down here, data setup, because I wanna show you some best practices. And then I'm going to explain the range lookup where we did true or false and what the difference is here. So on this new sheet, data setup, we have a set of customer records. Now we're gonna set this up here for VLOOKUP to pull in the last and first name here for whatever account number we type. But before we do that, I wanna take a look at the data itself. Now we didn't do this for the pizzas, but it's actually a good practice to have a unique identifier for each record that you have. So for our person like we have here, it can be an account number. Other examples are an employee ID number or a social security number. And that unique identifier has to be in this first column to the left. Now a last name is not a unique identifier because a lot of people have the same last name. And let me show you why that's a problem. Let's pretend that the account number column isn't here. So if I have to look up information for Terry Smith down here, I'd have to look her up by her last name. So if I type in Smith, it will start from the top and Excel will go down until it finds Smith. So here's a Smith right here. And then it again moves over to the right to whatever column I specify. Now notice here though, that this is for Cindy Smith. So once Excel finds a match, it will not continue downwards. So if I have another Smith like I do here for Terry Smith, or if I have five other Smiths, I could never pull that information for them. It will always stop at Cindy Smith because she is listed first. And that's why I need a unique identifier. So the account number for Cindy Smith here, 005, makes her different from Terry Smith, 009, and I can find either person's information as long as I have their account number. So unique identifier, first column to the left. All right, let me go back to the top here. Again, I wanna set this up so that when I type in an account number here, VLOOKUP will pull their last and first name. Now I already have customer account number three here, so I wanna pull out their last name and first name. I'm gonna go ahead and do VLOOKUP again. So I'll click here in cell B2. I'll do insert function, VLOOKUP. 
So the lookup value is going to be, again, cell A2, because that's where I have the account number typed in. Table array, I'll click into this next argument, and I'll select all these customer names here, customer information. And then for the last name, that should be in column two. So starting from the left, column one, column two. And for this one, I'm actually gonna type in false here. It's the next one that I'll type in true, but I'll click okay. And so I have a last name. All right, so once more for the first name, click here in cell C2, insert function, V lookup. Lookup value again hasn't changed, cell A2. And I'll go to table array. This also again has not changed. Column index number for first name, that's going to be in column number three. And now here I'll type in true so that we can see the difference. Okay, I'll click okay. So we actually don't have a difference yet. It's still the same, but let me test this out. So let me try customer number six here, 006, John. Yep, that still matches. Okay, let me try customer number 10, 010. That looks like it's still working out. Okay, let me try one more. Type in customer number 12. Now, wait a minute. So now I have an error here. So the last name gives me an error, but it still pulls a first name. So this happens to be the only one where I typed in true. So let me check the data. Is there a customer number 12? Well, actually, no. So it stops at 11. Well, then whose first name is this? Well, it actually happens to be customer number 11. Well, what happened here? So now we've come to the difference between true and false. Let me bring up the window here where it had the arguments. Now, when we type in false for this last one here, range lookup, that means Excel will only accept an exact match. If for some reason it can't find an exact match, like customer number 12 here, it will give me this error here, not available. But if I type in true, like I do here, Excel will accept an approximate match. So for customer 12, Excel will be like, well, I can't find 12, but if I round down to 11, it's kind of close, that's a match. So I'll just return this person's first name here, Lily. Close enough, job well done. Except no, when we're dealing with records like this, we want exact matches only, so we always type false. Now, remember I said before that technically this is not required and I could leave this field blank. Well, if I do leave it blank, Excel will automatically fill in true. So if I'm ever working with exact matches, I have to always fill this in with false. Now, why would we ever want to use approximate match? That's a good question. Let me hit cancel here. Now it's good for situations where we're dealing with ranges of numbers. I have one last example here to show you that. I'll go into the test score sheet. And I have a bunch of test scores and I want Excel to automatically fill in the letter grade. I'll go ahead and do VLOOKUP here in cell B2. Click on insert function, VLOOKUP. And so lookup value, I'm gonna look for this test score here, 89. And for the table array, I want to look up the 89 score in this table over here. And column index number is going to be two. Where here in the second column, I want it to return the letter grade here. Next, I need to do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and lock the table array here. Let me go ahead and clear this out and reselect it again. I'm going to hit F4 here on my keyboard to change these into absolute cell references. If you're not sure what those are, make sure to check out our other video on advanced Excel references. And we also have a class if you wanna take the live version of that. All right, for range lookup, I'm going to type in true here. Again, remember, true means an approximate match is acceptable. Okay, I'll click okay. And so this returns to me a letter grade of B. I'll go ahead and use autofill for the rest of these. Now, notice here again that 89 is not in this list here in this score and rubric. 92 isn't in here as well. In fact, none of these numbers are in here. So if I was to look for an exact match, I would just get a bunch of errors here. Now, because I did approximate, Excel took this test score, 89, and it goes down through this score and rubric until it finds the best match. 
So it goes past 89 and says, well, I went past 89 and it rounds back down to 80 and returns to me the letter grade for 80 here, which is B and returns it back here. Now Excel is always going to round down to the nearest number, never up. You can see this test score here, 68. So if we were rounding, uh, we would probably round it up to 70, which would be a C, but Excel doesn't see it that way. Excel will round it back down to a 60. And you can see here 60 matches up with the letter D there. That's just how it works. So again, when working with ranges like test scores or I've seen income tax brackets, uh, use the same thing here. You would use true in the range lookup argument. So that's it for VLOOKUP. We learned the basics of how it works, how to set up your data to use it. And then we saw how to use Excel for exact or approximate matches. So make sure you check out our other Excel videos on YouTube or take our live classes on these same topics. You can go to www.jackspubliclibrary.org to see those upcoming classes and register for them. We hope to see you there and thanks for watching.